Hi y'all, this is Eva from the book blog astriped.wordpress.com and I'm here to talk about my library loot. I haven't done this for a while, so bear with me if it's a little rough around the edges. And today I actually went to my library for the first time in a few weeks because um, I've been sick so I couldn't drive and I was all alone in the house so I couldn't convince anyone to bring my books back since no one was here and since I get a lot of books from the library there was a astronomical fine awaiting me. So I went today to sort it out and I was all ready to pay the whole fine and the librarian was so nice she cut it in half for me because she said I didn't have a history of I can't remember what she used. Not ridiculous but that was the effect. Ridiculous fines. Excessive. That's what she used. So anyway that made me really happy as did bringing new books home. So let's get started. First there is Finding Noof by Zoe Ferraris. Um, I wanted a book on CD because I've been sick a lot lately. And also when I'm getting ready for the day and stuff, I like books on CD. And this one is set in Saudi Arabia, and it's kind of a murder mystery. And I've certainly never, I don't think I've ever read fiction set in Saudi Arabia, much less a mystery. So it should be interesting. Then there's Black Sheep by Georgette Hare. This was um, an impulse thing. It was right next to the shelf for another book that I was looking on and I was like oh it would be really nice to have some comfort reading right now since I've been sick for so long so I'm looking forward to that The Blue Sky by hang on Galsan Chinga I think I just totally butchered that but that's okay this was another impulse I was looking for books by Gail Tsukiyama and see how close that is so I was like oh that looks interesting and it was on the top shelf so I couldn't see who had written it so I pulled it out, and it turns out it's a novel set in Mongolia. And I mean, seriously, you don't come across that every day. So I couldn't just leave it on the shelf. But on the other hand, I didn't want poor Gail to feel left out, and I've never read any of her books. So I went ahead and got one of her books as well. This is Night of Many Dreams, which is about two sisters in Hong Kong, right before World War II and then afterwards. Um which kind of reminds me of the plot summary of Lisa C's new book, Shanghai Girls, although obviously not the same city. Anyway, I've heard a lot of good things about Tsukiyama, and so I thought it was about time that I should give her books a try. As you know, if you read my Sunday Salon, I've promised myself to read 50% fiction by authors of color. So that has resulted in me kind of juggling around my wish list and kind of maybe looking at books that I might not have looked at right away, and I'm really excited. Then there's... The Dead Secret by Wilkie Collins. This is for the Classics Challenge. I love me some Collins. And I wasn't really sure which one to get next, but this is his first full-length puzzle romance. It was pre-The Women in White. So it should be interesting to see some of his earlier work, since I've only read his famous ones, really. Next up, Outcast United by Warren St. John. I put this on hold a long, long time ago, and it finally came in. Um, the subtitle is A Refugee in American Town. It's about these refugees who formed a soccer team. And I love soccer. I played it growing up two seasons a year. Sometimes I did all-star teams in the summer. So. And I'm very interested in refugee issues. It's also my 700 book for the Dewey Decimal Challenge. So, should be fun. Then there's The Trouble with Physics by Lee Smolin. This is for the Science Book Challenge. I read The Elegant Universe by Brian Greene a couple of years ago, and it was all about string theory, and it was just fascinating. And this is subtitled The Rise of String Theory, The Fall of a Science, and What Comes Next. Um, I might have to gear up for that one. I haven't read that many physics books this year. I used to read quite a few of them, but I've been lazy. Then Yes, My Darling Daughter by Margaret Leroy. I put this on hold a long time ago, and it just came in. I, I can't remember where I read about it, but I was reading about it again when I picked it up. And it's like a, com being compared to Rebecca, apparently it's going to be all gothic-y and scary. And it's about this single mom and her creepy three-year-old daughter, which, I mean, you got to love the creepy toddlers, right? Especially the nanny. Then, American Born Chinese by Jean Luen Yang. Um, I decided to just browse the graphic novel section at the library since I was there. Um, when I'm not feeling well, I love graphic novels because I can read them and they're still really important, but they don't require quite as much focus and effort on my part. 
And I've heard a lot of really, really good things about this one. Once again, I'm being more drawn to authors of color than I used to be just because of my new resolution. Although I think that's nonfiction, so that'll help me out. I've had such a problem trying to find nonfiction that isn't memoirs. <laughs> Speaking of nonfiction, we have Chagall by Jackie Wolschlager. Chagall is my favorite artist. I first saw him in an um, exhibit that the Russian Museum did when I was studying abroad in St. Petersburg, and I was just completely blown away. And since then, I've looked at a lot of his art. I've had calendars of his. I have little magnets that I got in Russia. Um, but I don't really know that much about his life. I mean, I know the general details, but that's it. So this biography was published to great acclaim at the end of last year, and even though it's huge, I'm excited about it. It's for the Art History Challenge. It'll be my last one for that, although I might end up reading more anyway. And the last two are more graphic novels that I found. Incognigro by Matt Johnson and Warren Pleece. First of all, I think that is one of the cleverest titles ever. This is Matt Johnson, and as he explains in the foreword, he's a black, he grew up a black boy who looked like a white boy. And so, when he was younger, he imagined if he had been living in the 1920s, he could have gone undercover and, you know, fought against white supremacy. And then he read about the leader of the NAACP who did just that, reported on lynchings in the 1920s. So this book is a fictional thing inspired by that. I actually just read it, and it was... It was good. It was very interesting. It was sad, though. Obviously, I mean, lynchings. And finally, we have Alice in Sunderland by... Hang on. Oh, look, I can't read his name. How annoying is that? Something Talbot. <laughs> Brian. Brian Talbot. Um, this was one of my original picks for the Graphic Novels Challenge. I read about it on Nymeth's blog, a.k.a. Anna. I had no clue it was so big which is kind of exciting. I like big graphic novels since they last a little longer. And I think it's like some weird mix of fiction and nonfiction. I'm not sure, so it should be interesting. And there you go. That's my loot for the week. It's so nice to be doing library loot again and to, you know, see what everyone's getting from their library and add more books to my wish list, which is already way too long. And I hope that you enjoyed my ramblings. I'll get better again, I promise. And come back next week. Bye.